What's the point? I'm promising something I never deliver. Um, all right. Here we go. Three, two. All right. Welcome back. It's time for another No Bad Wi-Fi. And as you can it see on your screen is. right there, Cradle Point. Well, that's Jennifer Huber. What's up? And I'm... You're missing it. Rob Boyd. Thank you. No one's going to know if you don't say it. <laughs> what are we... What are, what's the point of these rehearsals? The brutal, long rehearsals we go through. Actually, we don't have to do any rehearsing. But either way, this is an exciting show. Once again, we're it piecing is. parts of this together over time. So you see, yep. if you see the fact that uh, I aged uh, during this time frame or got a haircut once or something in here, uh, didn't did or did not change clothes, I can't even remember. But either exactly. way, hang on. After our, our core... Uh, con our core um, conversation obviously is with Cradle Point, and that's going to be Point. a gentleman that I very much have enjoyed meeting, Anthony Lawson. Very He's smart awesome. dude, great talker. Mm -hmm. and yeah, you know how much I appreciate that. He can um, go toe to toe with you. Oh, he can go past me. I'm very confident. <laughs> Because he he's he's, a, he's the real deal. He's got good stuff, and yeah. it. But he's a yeah. joy. To, he was a joy to talk to. A great personality. Yeah, we, we clicked personality wise. I think totally. uh, that may or may not show through, but uh, because I found out he could dish it much better, um, and, and, I, and I and I can't take <laughs> it most. as well as I thought. Yeah. That's, that's yes, really exactly, exactly. But actually, but beyond the wonderfulness of Cradle Point, hang on because we got a couple of uh, as always unique episodes at the end. We've got Wireless yep. Two. Yep, we've got about, Saeed um, Joffrey from Worldwide uh, talking about point. the Cradle Point um, portion, the, the the overall private LTE lab that you can get into um, with some assistance in the Worldwide platform where Cradle Point is one of the end devices in the overarching architecture. So that that was one really I cool. love because I was trying to put, I, and I'd worked with Saeed before on a Tech 37 episode because he's a he's an expert on the LTE stuff and everything that surrounds yeah. it. And there's a lot there. Um, yeah. Very, very smart. And but what was different is I was trying to put them in a box on where I thought the lab was going to go. But you guys right. do have labs at different levels. And just because yep. it's not an automated self-service lab doesn't mean that it's one not worth paying attention to nope. because you could have a chance. Although he shows a few others, you could have a chance to work with Saeed himself. Yeah, as, totally. Uh, he it explains. Can be customized. Yeah, exactly. For what you needed to do. Mm -hmm. You would love nothing more. I get that feeling. Um, yeah. oh, oh, we've also got Carter Burke from Excel Techs. You do. What did you like? I think what, he surprised. What? I think well, I think he surprised both of us where he pulled this uh, solar solution out of his hat. So talking about like supporting Cradle Point devices out in the field with these crazy enclosures and packaged kits and like he, you never know what he's yeah. going to pull out from behind his desk and show. You know that. Well, he that, took the uh, parts that I makes. had been recently introduced to understanding just how flexible you could be with what Cradle Point's been doing and and how much leverage there is for um, you know doing your last mile on wireless. Uh, that's not all they do by any means. That's just the one that I was most intrigued with. And then yeah. he took that even further, Excel Tech showing the enclosures and the ways in which they were just yeah. doing pop-ups where you could have a, a whole new that location, Pelican as case. Anthony well, talked yeah. about, in seconds, even if your power is a little bit uh, wonky. And in here Funny. in Texas, mm -hmm. we appreciate alternative sources of power. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are definitely looking for things like this. <laughs> um, yep. But we need power in a lot more than just the uh, cradle point uh, items. But either way. It's going to be a good show. You will enjoy it. I guarantee it. If not, we'll refund cool. every bit of money every that you paid penny. to access it. Yes. Every penny. <laughs> All right. With that, let's turn it over. We'll talk to Cradle Point and Anthony Lawson next. Well, all right. Anthony Lawson, I have really enjoyed getting to meet you and, and learn from you and, and some of the other members of your team. And so this has been good. I can't believe we hadn't met further, but you've been with Cradle Point for a little while now, but um, I'll let you explain that. Who is Anthony? Welcome to No Bad Wi-Fi. But who is Anthony and who is Cradle Point? If you could kind of walk us through that, and then I'll interject some questions as we get in deeper into the conversation. Sure, Rob. Well, first, thank you for inviting me. Pleasure to be here today. So Anthony Lawson, I lead what we call the Technical Marketing Engineering Group um, within Cradle Point, and that is part of our larger product management organization. Okay. So we're we're I, I roll up to the larger group that is responsible for all of our products that we define and ultimately build and bring to market. Excellent. And so now you I was also not familiar because it's Jennifer who said, hey, we got to go talk to Cradle Point. And she was very familiar from years past and up till now. And she said they're growing like gangbusters. They're doing yep. good stuff. Um, and I don't know, Jennifer, if you had said maybe your knowledge needed to be a little bit updated because they've been innovating oh, and yeah. needed to get it My refreshed. My first exposure was at one of the uh, the very first networking field day events that I got invited to many, yeah. many moons ago. 
So people can go back and search for that to see younger Jennifer uh, in a previous yeah. moon. Yeah, um, great shot. Mm -hmm. But Anthony, it, it, from a general sense, when you first, because gosh knows, we all go through these conversations with relatives and anyone else that isn't necessarily in the industry, but even in the industry, I, I am not that familiar with Cradle Point, or I wasn't until now. And so I've enjoyed learning more about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. It's obvious there's no reason for me to have not been more aware. Uh, but how do you describe what Cradle Point does? That's a good question. So I, I, I actually have a pretty good answer. That one? Okay. No, no, I, I got a, I've got a good canned answer. So I've got the answer to uh, how do I explain to my grandmother what I do for a living? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of what you, you know that one? That's the classic uh -huh. one, especially for I tech people, right? Time, but I know what you mean. Yep. So I, I've, I've been here at Curta, at Curta Point for about four years now. Um, I've got a very long career, two plus decades in, in industrial networking. But um, so I, I try to do, you know, a lot of justice to our legacy and where we started 13 plus years ago. Because even though we were just purchased, we weren't, you know, a startup by any means. We're a very mature company. That's right. You're, but, you're uh, back, Erickson, correct? Yeah. 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 Just a small acquisition, 1.1 billion in cash. No big deal. You know, it's nice just compliment though. Kind yeah. of a little, just, you know, little exchange of change. Um, so back to grandmother. All right. So when grandmother asked me, here's what I say. Um, if you are out on the streets, walking down the sidewalk and you see a ambulance, a fire truck, a police car, or Maybe you happen to walk by a retail store like a clothing company or a fast food restaurant, whichever one's your favorite one. There is easily a one in three chance that there is a credit point inside that business or inside the trunk or inside that vehicle somewhere. Okay. And that credit point is providing all of the data connectivity to power the needs of the, of the business or the people that are working in that in that industry. And they're doing that all over cellular connectivity. So that's kind of my grandmother description is is it we are actually all over the place we're powering all the things you walk by and see on a daily basis but it's not like we're the front logo that's right on the front of the business yeah and then grandma will ask you about how is authentication handled in those situations um yeah she just like mqtt yeah. broker and i'm like whoa grandma whoa. slow down whoa yeah <laughs> grandma i told you take this slow um yeah well so you're you're, you're really speaking to and i want to make sure i understand this though a niche that that cradle points focused on but you're also saying that some things have evolved um, over time. Can you highlight that a little bit better? Because you're, is there some specific things Cradle Point's doing, staying away from kind of the core, like I was at Cisco for many years, you know, and although they do some niche things in general, you know them from a wireless standpoint, let's say, for having access points and, you know, yep. radios and, and things like this. And you guys certainly do that, but you're, you're, you've specifically carved out a specific part of the market, Yes. Absolutely. So I, I think when, if people were to ask what was Credit Point's niche originally, it was probably cellular connectivity. Um, you okay. know, we, that, that was the infancy of this company, right? So we were, we were founded 13 plus years ago in the very early days of 2G and 3G, back when it was really just a technology for making voice calls, you know, cell phone calls. Right. And then it became, okay, can we start using this for data connectivity, wireless data connectivity? And so that, that niche you know, view of wireless data connectivity continued for many years. But to be honest, we shed that niche many years ago. And I'm talking about even before I came to Credit Point four plus years ago. And so that's probably one of the first things is that there might be some people that still view cellular data connectivity as a niche. And I think um, that's dramatically changed. I would definitely be uh, arguing in the favor of that. And then of course, with 5G on the horizon, I think that's going to change pretty much all the remaining people that haven't got on board with that idea yet. I think 5G will We'll push them over the edge. Well, here's what I think is interesting, because what you've spawned in my brain, and this has come up in other places, but maybe not to the extent that it's so clear here, is that we are finally facing the dawn of a time when we don't think wired first, wireless second. Um, and, but, and this is not new to you guys. You have been thinking wireless first for a while. And when I say wireless, you're not talking carpeted indoors necessarily. No. Well, I'm sure you do that, but you're speaking in the world, um, out and about sailor technologies and, um, and to cut to the chase of what I want us to talk about here, we've got pathway to 5g, which is you guys mm -hmm. sent me some information there and I was reading up about, uh, things that just make so much logical sense. And the, and, and, and in a nutshell, the idea is that 5g, yes, is a big thing and it's wonderful and we're all going to enjoy it. Uh, it's been coming for a while. It's, it actually is coming out now, but there's so yep. much that's causing that we're overlooking some in our bird in the hand opportunities in regards to how we run our businesses. Uh, but it does play well with what you guys have done in a sailor first 
area. So you guys, can you explain how you guys, what is your dream customer? What's the situation uh, that you most look forward to um, helping out? And it could be just, you know, who you're most, you're, you're, when we speak of customers, not in a generic sense, who's really appreciating what you can do for them and why? Well, let me let me kind of start a little bit with what you first started with, which is, yeah, is why with has Sailor? Yeah, you, you went through like twenty things, and I'm making Understood. mental notes. I'll get back. I was to trying to I land promise. on something, and I was just hoping um, to pick one out. Did yeah, you know? it's. I'll, I'll grab two or three. Perfect. So one of them is, you know, how what has kind of contributed to Sailor coming out of that niche that we just talked about, and I think the every day, you know, us as consumers, right? We have mobile phones, and now who has a home phone? And even wired connections right. at home, it could be a thing of the past here pretty soon with, with uh, cellular fixed wireless coming from a whole bunch of different carriers across the globe. So it's really the consumer has, has fully adopted this agility and mobility of wireless. You know, no wires, no constraints, agility. I, I want my data. I want it now and I want it anywhere. So think of that as that. Look how that's transformed us as consumers and just our daily life. Right. And now that is completely bled over into businesses and businesses are now looking at this and going, wow, I, I could, I could take advantage of all those same advantages that the consumer gets with an enterprise grade piece of equipment and do the same thing. I can turn up locations on a dime. I can do pop-up locations and do, you know, if it's COVID testing or retail sites or a farmer's market or a trade show, I can do those things rapidly because of the power of how mobile and agile wireless is. Right. So I just want to kind of, Touch on that for a minute. That that has really shifted the the winds for us in the, in the recent years because people have come to that realization that wow, I yeah, I want to be mobile. I want to be mobile in my business, my personal life. I want to be mobile all the time. I don't want to be constrained by wires. And then, uh, okay, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I, I, aren't a lot of customers? I mean, do you have people that well, they wouldn't be a customer really if they had this thought, but but the notion that they're thinking I can't. I've got to do, you know, the traditional way I'm setting up branch offices. I've got to coordinate with all the local Lex uh, to get the, the last mile delivery and coordinate this stuff. It's a big thing. I've hired some consultants. We're spending a lot of money. We've got a two year rollout plan uh, to make sure everybody's got good bandwidth in every market that we're in. Uh, but you guys are here saying you're overlooking the wireless market. Yeah. And this is the thing, Jennifer, with, I would think, well, there's not enough bandwidth in this, in, in, in those situations. So is that, but you guys have legitimately been doing this for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so two parts, what you just talked about, Rob. So the first one is in my old days, back in the, in the mid to late two thousands, when kind of uh, broadband connectivity uh, with like DSL and cable docs has started coming about a lot of companies with really distributed enterprise footprints, you know, lots of branch offices, right? Hundreds or thousands all across the continent of the United States. They were racing to adopt that because it was inexpensive, but there are 3,500 broadband ISPs operating in the continental United States. And so if you got a really big footprint, you could be faced with dealing with hundreds of different ISPs, hundreds of different bills, hundreds of different SLAs. And that just becomes such a, a, a you know, burden an overhead. It, it becomes unsurmountable. Right. And, and you so end up one of the bills for things you're not even using anymore, it gets lost, right? Well, I mean, bills you are start hard tracking. Yeah. yeah. The bills are hard to read. You start tracking hundreds of them. You might be overpaying here, underpaying here. You might not be giving your user a consistent experience, right? With your business applications. There's all these things, right? That it goes into the, the short of it is with wireless. The beauty of it is because we have several U S based uh, major carriers that cover nationwide that literally have ubiquitous coverage with 4g today and then 5g in the future, coast to coast. So you can go to one carrier and say, here are my 5,000 locations. Can you give me, sell your wireless broadband and all of them on one bill, one SLA, one product, one experience, and they can say yes. And then you That's can cool. also go to a second one and get redundancy and fully cut the cord and have two of those and nationwide get two bills. And they're <laughs> both wireless. Yeah. Look at that. And that's the day we live in. And that that's really, once, once these big enterprise companies really look at it through that lens, then it starts clicking. It starts clicking for financial sense, oh, technical so sense, a whole bunch of other ones. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to give you my misconception and have you explain the misconception because I think it's shared, sure. at least by people I know. Um, 4G is kind of a dead technology. Obviously, 5G is where everything's at. Uh, I can't wait for 5G because that's going to enable my business to do all the things I need to do. But, uh, but you know, I feel like 4G has got to be a loss. No one, surely no one's still investing in 4G as I loosely understand it. What's wrong with that statement? 
right. I mean, why you, you got to, it's more G's the better, right? You got to buy the more G's. Yeah. Cause the next so, number. um, five G's one more G than five G. Um, so the, here, here's the reality, Rob, that, that is actually a very reasonable misconception. That's pretty common. And oh, here's yeah. why okay. everything. Yeah. You're, you're not completely off the wagon. So, in um, area. in the past, with cellular technology, I talked about the early days of 2G to 3G to 4G. In every one of those cases, the uh, the predecessor was basically totally replaced by the, su the, the successor, right? So 4G or 3G replaced 2G. 4G is now replacing 3G. The carriers are starting to churn down those towers so they can refarm that spectrum and allocate it to 4G and 5G. However, when we got to 2020, 2021, that is going to completely change. And we're going to re kind of reset that expectation for everyone. 4G and 5G are going to operate in parallel for many, many years to come. That is not by design, They're, not just because not just because it takes yes. forever to roll out 5G. You're saying that's actually a design principle. <clears throat> Absolutely. The okay. the definition, the literal the literal acronym of LTE is long term evolution. And the whole design is they are going to continue to improve that specification, continue to put more advancements in it, more technology, more throughput, more capability. And it will continue to evolve over time. And it'll evolve right in parallel with 5G. And the the last kind of little punchline for you is the products you'll see from Creative Point coming out this year that support 5G will also have simultaneous support for 4G, and you'll be able to operate them on both networks simultaneously. So that's another proof point that it's no longer a successor. They're now joined in parallel going to the future. Well, let's talk a little bit more about what's happening within 4G still, because as I've only been recently learning, so is it the 3GPP that is standardizing around kind of what 4G is, leave off the LTE, because within 4G, there's a range, and as the standards happen, as long as they're beneath, what is it, 2 gig uh, in terms of throughput, it's still considered 4G, but there's still a lot of room, and there's, there's is it, help me out here, LTE A Pro, something like that? Yeah, what is LTE, the LTE yeah, that we've LTE got Advanced coming out Pro. now? Okay. Yep. And so yep. these and are that, investments being made now. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's part of that uh, that evolution I was kind of getting to earlier. That I, I really appreciate you kind of read up on it. And now now you got all the lingo. Now you, now you're. Set, I'm just right? enough to be. Jennifer's seen me do this before. He goes, he gets smart you're in really dangerous, now. dangerous areas. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So you're you're hired. Don't worry, Rob. So the um, LT LT Advance LT Advance Pro. That is that is this, the the label or the marketing language for the technology to your point of 3GPP, which is the standards body. And right. so each time they come out with a new release and they continue to evolve the 4G standard, then they come out with a label just to distinguish its generation from the previous one. So yes, each one of those has been a, a very distinct generation or, uh, where the performance has increased. So it's gone from you know a couple hundred megabits to several hundred megabits now gigabit and gigabit plus which is kind of what you're referring to yeah and so that's that evolution is kind of it's gone about well and those are huge good now just speaking strictly from the consumer standpoint because unfortunately that tends to be where i start trying to understand before i then get into how it differs or or complements in the business side but um does that mean that my my, my normal phone getting 4g lte today could be getting faster without ever touching 5g um there's benefits that are coming because I've, because to be honest, I actually, I was not interested, you know, when they're rolling out new iPhones with the 5G moniker, because I'm like, well, I know that it's not really picking all that up much. And so that's great. I wouldn't expect any change. And I'm not unhappy with what I get now. It actually works pretty darn well consistently. You know, I get things start streaming. I, I've, I've watched TV shows while I drive, you know, the things like this. So to me, that is everything I need. I know that doesn't forget yep. the whether I should be doing that or not, it's a small screen. It's not like a Tesla screen. I don't have one of those. But, you know, so the main point is, is there's a lot of value in the 4G side. So I assume like you guys are continuing, your customers that are on 4G, they're continually getting better and better performance without ever having to brush up against the 5G as of today, although you guys are obviously prepared for it, for the 5G as well. Yeah, and... and absolutely. So the, the, the top level answer is yes, Rob. The, the, there is some detail to that you as the as the standards increase and the new technology and it evolves and it gets faster there are some hardware visions that kind of follow that natural progression as well okay. because yeah. new standards new technology usually gets also baked into new silicone right because it comes down to a, a silicone ability it's radio you know what what's actually baked in the radio and what it can what it can talk and how um but the the answer is yes i mean i remember back to my early days my very first iphone was when iphones first got lte 
I think it was like iPhone four or five, you know, back then. And I remember doing a speed test and I got like maybe five megabits. Yeah. And I was like, oh, five megabits. This is, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a couple T ones worth of bandwidth. You know, I'm, I'm old. You see the thinking in T ones. Yeah. One point five. I just, just dated myself for your audience. I, I hope, you know, so oh, I love it. You know, nice. I was like, that's a couple, you know, that's a couple T ones of bandwidth following me around everywhere I go. That's impressive. And then as, as LT advance, I, I see like, oh, 20 megs, then 25. Like when I, when I joined Creative Point four years ago, a customer would get on a good day like 20 to 25 megabits of, of LT bandwidth to their to their credit point router. That was that was pretty good nationwide. Now the nationwide average is higher than that, and our customers are seeing 50 to 100 megabits on a on a daily average basis. And so that is that is completely that. changed, right? So from years ago DS1 speed to now we're getting parity with wired broadband. Like if you go get a Doxus or a DSL, we have parity there. And then now pretty soon here with the latest advancement of Gigabit LTE and then 5G, we're going to get parity with wired, like fiber wired lines, which is just yeah. total, you know, my mind. Well, and talk about that because let's talk about your customers and maybe just some examples is what's, because I, I, I was really, I can really appreciate the fact that you guys saw this, it feels like early on. And there's this notion that customers are rolling out without waiting for those local loops. They are establishing business, doing pop-ups <clears throat> and different things. You know, what's a typical uh, customer that kind of represents the type of stuff you feel like you guys are great at and you want to continue yeah. doing more of? So I got a, I got another one. You, it, I, I'm glad oh. you got the memo. You teed me up just perfect. like T-ball in here. So we're, we're good to go. Take it away. So, so next one is um, when I about I think it was like the first or second week. So when I first arrived at Credit Point, I was actually working as a solution engineer within our sales team, and uh, we get a call from a customer. And it was like a Wednesday afternoon, and there uh, there was a CTO, and he was a CTO of a burger chain in, in Southwest Texas, and they were opening a brand new um, location, you know, brand new burger location, and they were opening in 48 hours later. So they were opening on Friday, and, and they're they calling you then. This- yeah, they called okay. they called us 48 hours before open, right? And there's a reason why. And okay. so they were opening in a brand new strip mall and they were the first business to be ready and it was going to open for business, right? And they had contracted a fiber wireline service from an unknown carrier entity. It doesn't doesn't matter in this story, but they contracted a fiber service. <laughs> yeah. And the CTO got called that morning 40 48 hours in advance and said, "I'm sorry, your fiber is delayed. It's going to be another 30 days before you get it." And the CTO goes in full panic because he's like, I, I, hired a, I hired the radio station. The radio station is going to be here. They're going to be broadcasting live. I took ads out on the news. I took ads yeah. out online. This is not reversible. I'm screwed. You know, like yeah. I, I'm out a bunch of money if we don't open for business on Friday. So he's like, I, I heard about these credit points and these, you know, 4G, whatever. Can, it, you know, can you help me? Is this the answer? And we said, absolutely. So we overnighted him one of our uh, all-in-one enterprise business-grade routers. It has integrated switch ports, integrated access point, integrated uh, 4G LTE modem, all in one box, sent it out to him, all managed by our NetCloud service. He unboxed it 24 hours later, got a SIM card from his carrier of choice, inserted that, and 30 seconds later, he had that thing online. He hooked it into his uh, his point-of-sale machines, his POS machines, and he opened for business on Friday and he called us on Monday and basically said we were a lifesaver, you know, otherwise they that's would have fantastic. just been dead in the water. And so that that's that's one good example. And we have a lot yeah. of retail customers, but I just I like that example because it highlights what I was talking about earlier about how agile this could be and how you just quickly stand this up wherever your business needs the connectivity. Well, this oh, is the way it should be, because I, I think obviously this is the the nirvana that we're we're looking for, even if we're not used to thinking about it yet. And so it's a bit of a paradigm shift in our own heads. But in that situation, because uh, you mentioned fiber, they're waiting. And, and of course, if you don't have any fiber in, you know that's not going to be simple. Because uh, I have yeah. fiber at the house here, and I remember watching four people stand around while one person did the digging, um, and to bring it in, you know, and and then another long time to light it. But the but, you know, fiber is, 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 of course, extremely reliable, high bandwidth. There's just a ton of stuff you can do with it. Um, why would a business be looking at fiber and then suddenly be able to do the same thing on a, on a, on a cellular wireless? Do you feel like, do a lot of customers or people not have a really good idea of their bandwidth needs and they're overthinking it because they think fiber is the ultimate way to do it? And they, maybe they're wasting uh, yeah, time think- and money? 
Maybe, maybe not. I, I think okay. I think fiber. So uh, there's a couple things that play there, Rob. So for instance, my house here is a is a fairly new construction in the last two years in Idaho, and the carriers that are operating in this region, the CLEC or ILEC, they made a decision that they're no longer putting copper in the ground. They're only installing yeah. fiber. So my home has no copper to it whatsoever. It is only fiber from the street. And so a little bit of that is just evolution that the carriers are naturally just going to all fiber because they don't want to lay more antiquated copper, if you will, into the ground. They only want to put new fiber optic because it just has more future proof and potential in their eyes. Right. So they're just kind of thinking about the longevity of their infrastructure and their investment. But um, I, I, I think where maybe you were getting at and I do agree is um, and and this kind of goes to 5G, right? We get a lot of customers call in and say, well, I want, I want 5G. And we start to, okay, so, help me understand your use case. Let's talk about your use case. Let's talk about what what is your your bandwidth requirements? What's your latency requirements? What's your application experience need? Like help us understand your business and then we can map the appropriate technology. And a lot of times it's, um, I just, you know, I want the fastest car on the street, right? I I, I want the Hellcat and and that's what I'm gonna buy. And we're like, okay, well here here it is. You you can have one for low, low price today, you know? So, um, but uh, some of it is that, um, some of it is, you know, we have a lot of customers that that do really go through the education process and, 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 and partner with us as a trusted advisor, and we help them pick the right technology for their use case. And in almost all cases, um, to date at least, and for the, for the foreseeable future, 4G has checked all those boxes. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and as we kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, there's enough still happening within the evolution of 4G. And, and, it, and if we didn't make this point, because I remember reading about it, but 5G is specifically designed to work in conjunction with 4G. Well, you did mention it's by design. And I was not really aware of that, or at least I hadn't thought about it, you know, because the hyper focus is on. But the main point I did want to make, and, I, and Jennifer, I'm curious, when you work with customers, um, do you find that customers sometimes just get in a habit of ordering certain things and... Uh, oh, this certainly. is how we've we roll it out. And this is the way we've always latest, done it. Greatest period, and they're willing to pay for it. And then you've got other customers that that ask for blue sky solutions, and then you start to break it down for them. And they're like, whoa, 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 let's wind this back a little bit and figure out what we actually need. Yeah. So there's a lot of discovery that takes place just because the ask is for X. There's a lot of discovery that will clarify whether or not you actually need the X or is Y suitable. Well, I was thinking that as we get into 5G, that we start you know, thinking about wireless first, and then only if that's not working, then you consider other options. But what I hear Anthony saying is that Cradle Point has been going wireless first. Uh, there's no reason to wait to 5G. Uh, but yes. Anthony, as we as we kind of yeah. go in there, what is what is Cradle Point doing? Uh, you know, as you go forward in terms of 5G and how how are you guys positioned? What should we expect first? As much as you can talk about, of course. But it, you know, both from industry and and uh, Cradle Point. And one thing I want to kind of just step back on, Rob, I want to make sure that for, for you guys and the audience that it doesn't come across like I'm downplaying or, or shortcutting 5G by means. So. That's, yeah. that's absolutely not the case. You know, the, the, the overall message, and, you know, it's in the kind of the, the punchline title here, this pathway to 5G, which is a message that Credit Point's been putting out in the marketplace for about two and a half years now. Yeah, I took it right and off the marketing the, materials. Yeah. yeah, I know. Just perfect. Copy and paste. Love it. They'll, they'll be happy. I figured it would have a good um, fit. Yeah. <laughs> But the, 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 the short of that is, is that we want customers to adopt wireless. And, and it's not so much we want to get, immediately get in the conversation of, of X versus Y, right, to Jennifer's point. Is it 4G or 5G? Let's not get there yet. Let's first talk about the virtues, the ones we've all talked about in this call so far. And let's get you on the pathway. And it's really the pathway to wireless is another way to think about it. Don't get too hung up on 4G and 5G. It's let's get you on the pathway. And then also let's get you um, into the mode that – NetCloud, which is our cloud service and our software offering as a company, is going to take you wherever your wireless needs may end. So if your wire, if your use case and your wireless needs land in 4G, well, we have a NetCloud service with a whole portfolio of endpoints that will satisfy that. If your your use case and your needs land toward 5G, well, we have that as part of our service and our hardware offering as well. So it's really the the pathway to wireless. Come join us adopt wireless, adopt this mobility and agility and all these things I've talked about, these virtues that we all learned as consumers, bring that in your business, get on that pathway today, and then we'll we'll be your trusted advisors and we'll take you wherever you need. Well, so Anthony, I, that actually sounds like a really good way to end this in terms of a summary statement. I hope because it, <laughs> I know, it, it felt like good. A closing Sorry. And I'm looking at my time because I, I could talk to you. We, we both were worried about how long we, we might actually talk to each other. And Jennifer's being so polite, knowing that she's got yeah. two talkers burning up all the airtime. 
Um, <laughs> but is there anything else that we needed to cover that you were like, ah, oh, he didn't ask me about such a, I mean, I'm sure there's a million, but yeah. Just one, just one more, Robin, Please, and I'll yeah. keep it short. No, no, um, you, you hinted this one earlier in the call, and I know this is one that um, comes up a lot: is common misconceptions. Okay. So we we talked a lot about the evolution of the company and the evolution of the technology, but one of the one of the still common misconceptions out there that I like to clear up is a lot of people when they 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 hear the name Creative Point, they immediately say, "Oh, Creative Point, they're a, a a great cellular modem or they're a great cellular gateway," but that's all they are. Or maybe they they're just an IoT device, or maybe they're a mobile you know gateway in a in a trunk of an ambulance or a patrol car. But that's kind of it, right? And they don't really have a branch play. They don't really play with you know the quote unquote big boys, the Cisco's and Junipers of the world. So I wanted to kind of clear that up. Um, that was certainly the case ten plus years ago, but it has not anywhere been the reality for the last five plus years. Yeah. And so the reality is today is Creative Point makes an appliance that is an all in one business router, and it has advanced routing, it has advanced security. Um, it checks all the HIPAA, PCI, you know, compliance boxes. It does all those things for any branch use case, for any mobile use case, and any IoT use case. And that includes all the verticals, healthcare, finance, retail, restaurants, you name it. So that's just the one thing I wanted to leave you. Maybe that's my closing statement. Is okay. um, Yeah, and I can underscore that because I took the Cradle Point online training and it was yeah. like overwhelming, like all the things that you could do with it. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's a hard, it's so hard to keep up with things. Um, they move so fast in the industry here and, but it's a joy. And I, you know, when I think about back to my sales days, there's nothing I love more. And I don't know if you experience this when you go into a customer and they have one set of expectations and you're able to, as it sounds yes. like, blow them away with your capabilities and go, you guys are doing, you know, you guys have so much more opportunity here and we can make this so much easier for you. And that is fun uh, as a technologist. So much fun. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's the single thing I miss about sales, going in, meet new customers, get up on the whiteboard and really, you know, exciting them about um, our technology and just opening their eyes to all the things they just had no clue. And they're like, you know, I love my favorite thing. Wow. You can do that too. Yes, we can. Yeah. It hurts to hear it. You're like, I didn't know you did that. And you're like, that hurts, but let's get this taken care of. But, yeah. but we'll, we'll skip over that. I'll, I'll take my medicine and we'll, we'll move on. Yeah, exactly. Well, Anthony, thank you so much. Really appreciate yeah. what you, uh, I, Really happy that Jennifer pushed me on this and said, we need to get them on. Uh, these guys are doing good work. And um, and so it's good to have you here. You're a great representative for them as well. So I, I look forward to working together awesome. again in the future. Perfect. Thank you so hey, much. Anytime, anytime, Rob. Love to come back. Thank you. And thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate setting this up. Oh, all right. Well, I see Saez joined us now. So it must be time to look into the labs. Jennifer? It's definitely that time. Yeah, Saeed Jaffrey is here with us today. So Saeed, tell us who you are and what you do with Inside Worldwide. Hi, everyone. Yeah, this is Saeed Jaffrey. I'm the technical solution architect within Worldwide Technology. I just wanted to walk you through the, the, the lab setup that we have done here. Okay, if you can okay. see here, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the private LTE basically relies on different components to kind of stitch together to make up a, a solution. And what we have is that we have JMA Wireless as one of our partners that provides us the CBRS-based uh, radio access network. We, uh, we also have two different packet cores, and I can walk you through this uh, setup that we have in our ATC. We have Droid, as a, which is a kind of a lightweight VM uh, for a packet core solution that, uh, that hosts the Evolve packet core HSS, which is the home subscriber server and the IP multimedia system, which is for the voice over LTE communication. Uh, along with that, we have another uh, uh, packet core, which is based on Cisco's Ultra EPC, which is deployed in a CUPS architecture. And people who don't know what CUPS is, is basically a control and user plane separation, which basically targets uh, customers that wanted to utilize a hybrid cloud-based model so where they wanted to kind of place their control plane into uh, the public cloud and the user plane near to the end devices uh, to achieve high throughput and low latency on those devices. So um, along with that, we have another partner called in a net number, which provides the HSS that works in conjunction with the Cisco's packet core. Uh, and then all of it basically deploys on top of a VMware based platform, uh, which is provided uh, as an infrastructure base from Cisco and Dell. Now, coming back into the use cases, and uh, uh, the one of the important use cases that the this uh, this whole solution entails is includes a cradle point branch router that targets uh, use cases from enterprise to healthcare to industrial IoT. 
as part no, of so this, this would be a, a cradle point use case as as tied in the labs you've got it tied in with the bigger picture solution on uh, tying into the cisco epc uh, into the full mobile that, core essentially that is correct that's exactly oh, that's what excellent. we are okay. showcasing right. wow okay so, you've done a lot of work uh, go ahead <laughs> yeah, so specific to our architecture, we have utilized CradlePoint branch router to showcase an industrial IoT-based use case where we have a thermal camera that hooks to the CradlePoint router that showcase a live thermal video feed of critical components within a utility substation, for example, where it's there to monitor the breaker panels, the insulators, the bushings, etc., for monitoring of large swings of uh, abnormal increase in temperature. And that temperature bit data is then inferred on a camera, which then converts the industrial control protocols like Modbus and Ethernet IP, et cetera, which then sends that data back to the cradle point router and sending that feed over the air interface connected to the private LTE core to a Grafana based dashboard that converts that raw data that is being sent by that thermal camera into an understandable format for a user which helps these utility companies take proactive measures, which in turn uh, save them not only the cost, but also providing reliable service to their end customers. Wow. And That's this is one cool. of the, yeah, uh, and, and definitely this is basically, this specific one single use case is getting a lot of traction on our WWT portal page that you can see on the screen, which relates to our private LTE network setup that we have done. Well, how do we interact with this stuff? This is something you're, you're describing quite a monumental undertaking here, I would think, in terms of what you've put together. But you do this in the service of, of so that customers can get a better understanding of exactly what's happening and whether or not that would apply to their situation, all of it or a, a portion of it, perhaps. But how would someone begin to interact without even having to travel to St. Louis, as I understand it? Yeah, yeah. So, so fundamentally, we offer, offer solutions and services right from the indoor to outdoor radios all the way to the end devices, which I just mentioned here, one of our important partners is CradlePoint, where we partner, but we also partner with different OEMs in the industry. What we do is in terms of the services is that we do offer consultation, design, validation of these solutions in our advanced technology center along the lines of integration, providing managed services as a complete lifecycle management of the solution. How to interact with us? Uh, reach out to your appropriate account managers and the uh, and the CSEs who then bring those into our portal page, which you can see on the screen as the WWT portal page, which is a publicly available page, which then uh, has the information for the owners of those labs. In this case, if I kind of showcase you who those owners are, you can basically browse through this particular portal page and you can go down and we see including myself and my colleagues who are kind of day in, day out, showcasing these solutions to our end customers. And uh, you can reach out to any one of us. We would yeah. be love to help you go through or skim through the challenges that you guys are facing in the industry and then help you, as what I mentioned about the services that we offer, go through from end to end, providing your yourself a complete solution that entails private LTE. Today we have Stu from Echo, and I'm super excited. It's his first time on the No Bad Wi-Fi show. And Stu, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I want you to answer the question that I've got for um, our main speaker is CradlePoint. And uh, their use case was setting up uh, Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity at a remote spot on a moment's notice. And I want you to speak to how Echo can help in situations like that. So Stu, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jennifer. Yeah, that's, that's a great introduction. Um, thank you. I'm Stu Nasty for North America for Echo. And you know what? Uh, that's that's one of the questions we get all the time from from customers is, you know, how can you help us kind of achieve our goals, right? And we want to make sure that we're looking at it holistically as a taking that high performing Wi-Fi approaches. I want to make sure that I got the right amount of APs. I want to make sure that I'm going to be uh, working uh, successfully and have um, a successful outcome. We all start that in in, in our design. We got to start in that planning and understand is what what am, what is my building going to look like? Well, how many clients am I going to have? I want to make sure I've got the right APs, the right model, antenna configuration. And so those are some of the things that we can help you with. We walk right through that into the the, the validation stage, and you know after you've done the the design and implemented the APs, time to validate. 
And then we walk over into the later on to that day two, day three support is maybe we might need to optimize. Are the AP still performing? Is the RRM algorithms running? The radio resource management, as we like to call it in, in our acronym world, right? Mm -hmm. And we, then we take it on to maybe there's a troubleshooting. Is there an open ticket? So we have a, a, a number of different um, items in our toolkit that ICAO provides to achieve that. Once we go back into that, um, that troubleshooting exercise and maybe we're looking into, oh, it's time to upgrade. So part of that 360 life cycle, we can take you right back into the design again. So that's how we kind of wrap things around. You know, you remind me of Stu, and it's good to be on with you again. Wireless Stu, as most people know you. Most people don't think even know your last name because um, I had to look it back up. And um, the how important is it? I always think of wireless as being very important to assess, you know, when you're going through deployment and there's hopefully everybody has a lot of focus on that area. But I feel like a lot of people don't go back and analyze on an ongoing basis unless there's just a major problem that they're chasing. How important is it to kind of remain um, somewhat um, actively aware of the RF environment and how it's performing before users maybe are complaining about something? Is that and it, do, how well do you guys work in that in that? We're very, very well, actually. That's a great question because um, with the advent of our Eckhouse Sidekick, which you can kind of see beside me here, that's our all-in-one tool that actually does that diagnostic and troubleshooting where we can actually read what the APs are doing. It's great to have an NMS platform, um, you know, to show what your access points are up, they're broadcasting, sure. But what does the RF pattern actually look like? And that's one of the cool things that Sidekick does is in conjunction with our applications, we can actually go out and walk the floor. Maybe it's the warehouse floor, a manufacturing, typical office, or even home or outdoor. We can actually see what that radiation pattern looks like. And so that we can see, okay, great. I can see it's covering these areas. My NMS or management platform says, no, it looks like it's good, but I really want to know what it's really doing because sometimes APs go astray. Yeah, you got to chase them down. And to do that, you got to see them to begin with. That's right. You got to see them. And and you know what? The, the Wi-Fi is invisible, right? So we want to be able to, and for us to paint that picture, we need a tool to do that. And that's yeah. where the Sidekick comes in. Excellent. And this is probably not uh, in terms of Echo How, but isn't Sidekick, isn't that the name of that wireless device that was popular pre-iPhone? I want to say. Uh, yes. yes. That's right. right. Out keyboard. Yes. And then Paris like got, Good old. got hacked. That's all I remember. Wasn't that, is that same one or am I mixing up? My, no, I think tells. you're mixing that one up. Yeah. But to, I try to get it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think, but so the sidekick you're referring to in your shirt there, nice, nice nod to, uh, as a company man, but that's, that's the sidekick that Ekahau uses to make site survey it's, uh, analysis, just an ongoing, simple, don't even need to think hard about it. You said, right. You guys have made we want to make yeah. sure that we make, that we take the heart, you know, it, it Wi-Fi can be hard. And when we make it easy and yeah. easier, faster and smarter. Yep. I've always counted on you guys to visualize it for me. That's what I love is your visuals. Well, that's the thing, right? Because yeah. the, the, the software out there today doesn't really do that. And, and I really like for me, like, I want to get into the, um, you know, take a quote from uh, an old friend of ours, let's get into the meat and potatoes of things, right? I want to actually look and see what is happening with my access points. Right. I've got an access point up and behind this, up behind me here. You can't see it, but it's the 3802E, right? It's got those antennas on it. I want to know how that actually um, attenuates or, and propagates throughout the, the 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 floor of this house, and so I can do that and visualize that with uh, with my sidekick and my apps. And I think that's actually super uber cool. Yeah, I need to talk to you about getting one here because I just tell the kids that it'll go away eventually. Just wait a little while, and I go back. Just to wait sleep. a little while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how that's how I analyze. Jennifer, anything else important to cover here before we uh, move on? No, I think Stu nailed it. All right, Jennifer, hey, it's time. Looks like we got Carter Burke here. That it tells me it's time, time for our Excel Tech segment. <laughs> yep. Everybody's favorite segment. Absolutely. We hear that a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carter, I, I, you're no stranger to Cradle Point, and you guys have been working with them, and, um, and you have a number of things to show us from what I understand. Yeah, yeah. We've been very fortunate to, uh, to do a lot of work with Cradle Point, a lot of it because you know, as Jennifer and I've talked about it, even you, Rob, we've been in the industry a long time. You make friends and friends go to different companies. And we just happen to have a lot of people that, that we know and like at Cradle Point. They have a great product and yeah. have, have really carved out a nice niche uh, for, for a lot of things they're doing. 
but yeah, so kind of we're, we're you know, obviously knowing what Excel Text does and trying to focus in whether it's antennas and closures and that kind of stuff. With Cradle Point, we really tried to niche into some pretty cool stuff and actually some neat stuff we've done with you guys and and even some stuff with uh, Bart Robinson around some stuff I'll talk about in a minute. But a lot of it is around, obviously, when you're talking about a Cradle Point, it's not just Wi-Fi. You guys all yeah. know that. It's going to have all kinds of radios. Some of the So some of the things we've done for them is really come up with some cool antenna designs. This actually is a nine-in-one antenna we have. Uh, a seven and one, a five and one. So based on whichever radio you're using with, uh, yeah, kind of a nice little black form factor. Yeah, uh, I like, the, I like you, the black, uh, actually. Yeah, no, yeah, we can really, we, it's, it just makes it a nice color. But I know you can make them look however you want. Color. Yeah, that's what you're good yeah, at. Yeah, exactly. And um, the key is having all the different radios. So this particular antenna has nine elements inside of it. Oh, wow. And which makes it cool in a real small form factor. So whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's LTE, whatever the radio is you're dealing with, with uh, with Cradle Point, whether it's the 900, the 600 series, the 1100, we're going to have a different antenna. And here's an example of one of the for one of their smaller radios is a little three-in-one. So uh, you're going to have the different radios based on what you're trying to do. Okay. You know, we've I do love that you go through the work. slides in real life. I love that. Like, and here's the the yeah. two dimensional, and here's the three dimensional. Well, he does it without telling me. I, I thought we were just looking yeah, at slides, awesome. and then he pulls up it's show awesome. and tell. I'm like, great. all right, that's like, fine. No, Carter's it's real. It's real. Carter's on the floor. Awesome. You guys remember? Keep it. People make fun yeah. of me all the time, but I, I I like the props. I'm a prop guy. Yeah, yeah I like it. it too. Anyway, yeah. So we're we're continuing to come out with new antennas for them. And it's getting us into other areas, which is great. So we are doing a lot more around, I'd call traditional cellular type antenna technology. You'll see us coming out with new products that are going to be around, whether it's LTE or whatever technology we're talking about, 4G, 5G, you, you, you name it. But a lot of work, do a lot of work with the IBR 600, the IBR 900, which are really big flagship products for them. Uh, Another thing, if you go to the next slide, which is probably one of the coolest things we've done with them, is around this portable solution to go. So this is some of the stuff we did with BART, and we're still doing with you guys today. But you can see how nice, tiny form factor. Mm -hmm. This has been a popular product, but it got really popular during the pandemic. Because what it allows you to do, I'll show you real quick, yes. is... Yes. With a nice all in one, we may have to get, get yeah. lined up. You have the cradle point that's a oh. uh, the IBR 600. Mm. You've got your antenna, your five in one, your Excel Text accelerator battery pack, all in one package. And what this allows you to do, even without opening it on the side, you can, uh, excuse me, go the right direction. You can, uh, Turn on a little power button and take Ethernet out, and you can power either make it a little wireless hotspot if you want. You can connect to it with Ethernet. But what a lot of this, the places were using this for was they would take the a cradle point uh, router, if you will, and they would connect to cellular and they'd bridge down and they'd do a Wi Fi hotspot. So we're using these in a lot of these areas that didn't have very good connectivity for the kids yeah. for schools. So whether it was in parking lots or on top of buses or whatever or just taking this kit and carrying it where you needed it to go, turn it on by a simple, there's a little bitty button over here on the side. That's awesome. A simple push of the button, this thing will be connected and online within a matter of minutes. And how simple is that? Even, yeah. you know. That's awesome. Because you're talking about edu educators happy to do this. And it's not tech people, they want to push a button and go. So right. we've actually, we can't build these fast enough still. This is a very big move, oh, of course. Oh, that's great. And a lot of that was done yeah. in partnership with Cradle Point, so that's a really cool solution. Cool. Well, what is yeah, this? And, uh, what are these solar? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. You're on a roll here, but I was like, I was anxious to get to the solar <laughs> stuff. But what else you got? Well, is that, solar, is that where you're going? Another, yeah. yeah, exactly. Another thing was with, with again about all, back to this remote power, or I want Wi-Fi everywhere, but I may not have power everywhere. A lot of a lot of it is again working with Cradle Point, where we'll do a cellular backhaul and provide local mm -hmm. wireless coverage, all secured, but use solar as the power. Whether it's we don't have power which is sometimes the case or don't want to run power for one device and have to pay yeah. an exorbitant amount of money. Think about a lot of these specifically in the Northeast where there's, you know, sometimes more expensive labor. You might have unions, uh, nothing wrong with that, but it can be expensive for one power run, put up solar. Then you have your nice little hotspot and, uh, gives you a nice little local area, um, to do. We've actually looked at installing solar 
we actually we're coming out with them. We haven't come to market with them yet, so they're kind of cool. But they're like solar sheets that you could put on like top of a bus, but you wouldn't be able to see them. So that would allow you to make a bus could actually be mobile stop, but have you know solar recharge and do a little hot spot. Then maybe at the end of the day they pull back you know to the school bus depot and start over the next day. Oh, a lot of problems with putting on top of buses big solar panels is you're worried about you know is anybody going to mess with them, vandalize them. You try to hide the stuff where nobody sees them. So that's a this, lot of the cool stuff we're doing as well. Yes, yeah, it reminds me. I want to have you and Cradle Point design me. I'm kind of interested in doing this combination van life and uh, a show host. Sure. That I do it, but I you know, I but that. I travel around and and occasionally get some get physically involved with people more so than we're able to do now. Who are those guys that is part of that club that goes around and they're like a van club and they're you know almost like a jeep club or whatever. Yeah. You are talking about the van, the van life? It's a whole deal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's cool. what I've that's what I've seen. Although it's good looking yeah. people, so I don't yeah. know if I'd be welcomed. But but then well, I, it's, it's something I bring my motorcycle, yeah. attach it on the back, so I could do some day rides uh, yeah, from the yeah. spot. That's yeah. Cool. Do we have anything else yeah, to show here, man? You guys could working with different ways at Cradle Point to get provide power, really, and connectivity. You know, that's their, their that's where their sweet spot is. How do we get absolutely Wi Fi where it's not and get connectivity? Because again, they they have so many different radios they're working with, which gives them so much flexibility. Well, that's perfect. Well, Carter, man, always exciting. Always. Thank you so Thank much, you. Carter. I appreciate y'all's time, and thanks for always including us, and let me know if you have any questions or need anything else from us. Thanks for including us. All right, take care, man.